going to continue with the discussion on aerodynamics. Let's get into it. All right, so in my previous video where I discuss aerodynamics of the Model 3, there were a few things that I really didn't get into. Part of that was to minimize the amount of time that I had invested in that video. It just, it was running long and, and um, I needed to cut it short. Also, I kind of figured that this would have to be a two-part video. So to that end, I wanted to get just a little bit deeper into it. And um, so we'll start uh, with the, the overall shape of the car. Now, you can clearly see the um, the shape of the car as as you go from the roof it tapers real gradually down to the tail so that taper smoothly takes the air up over the car and runs it down and keeps the air attached to the surface the problem is if you if you cut the rear end of a car down too sharply like cars that have a rear window and then a flat trunk lid what that does is the air will will want to detach at the roof line and then tumble along the back window and across the trunk. In this case, the air will stay attached to the body of the car, sweep down, and skip off the tail with only a very small amount of swirling off the tail. That small amount of swirling off the tail is very important. Small eddies at the rear of the car, or vortexes, are more desirable than large. It's uh, much less wasted energy. So something else that a few people had pointed out are the very tight gaps along the glass. And um, my, uh, my fit and finish and the gaps are very tight on my car. Now, theoretically, you could tape over or fill those gaps. Uh, I haven't done that partly because the, any gain in efficiency is pretty, pretty minuscule when you do that, but it is something that can help. But you'll notice that the glass is very flush where it goes from the transition of the windshield to the main roof and then the transition from the main roof to the back glass. Nice and smooth transition and also a very smooth transition to the trunk lid as well. So that gives the air a clean line to smoothly run down the back of the car. Now another thing down underneath, this is the diffuser. The diffuser takes air and cleanly sweeps it up from the back of the car and skips it off the rear. I pointed that out in my last video. What I did not point out are these little air dams in the diffuser here. Those air dams do a couple things. One, they help separate the wake of air coming off the back of the tire from the air coming up off the bottom of the car, and they keep that smooth flow of air trapped to reduce how much turbulence is coming off the side. So those small air dams are very important. Um, <clears throat> another very important aspect of the car is the overall shape, the body line of the car. So let's see, I'll back up here and get a top-down view. Now what I'm, what I'm looking at here, uh, you'll notice that the car has this hip section. Uh, actually, my little Civic Si has a similar hip section here at the gas cap. And um, now a lot of people assume that that's just for aesthetics, to give the, give the car a, a sort of a, a hip shape at the rear. And though I do believe it looks nice with a flared fender look, what, it, what it's doing primarily is taking, taking the air from the wide passenger cabin and slowly tapering it in. So you'll notice that line, the air tapers inward as it comes along that line, and the overall profile of the car narrows as it comes to the rear. So it starts wide at the roof and narrows back. So you see that, that line curving inward. So this pulling in reduces the turbulence at the rear of the car and allows the airflow to collapse down so that you have a smaller wake at the rear of the car. So obviously the car is symmetrical, so both, car, both sides of the car have that, that tapered look. So when you sight down the side of the car, you can really see it where at the, the rear view mirror there, it's the cabin, passenger cabin is the full width of the car. But then as you come toward the rear, it narrows inward and that, that narrowing really does pull the air in and reduce the turbulence at the rear of the car. So one other thing that a few people had 
uh, gotten confused about in the comments section, I had mentioned lift being created as air flows over a car. So you've got the, you've got the side view of the car here, and you'll notice that obviously under the car it's nice and flat, but the, uh, over the top of the car the air has to go up and over. So when you have air going straight underneath an object and then curving over the top of it, that's roughly the shape of an airplane wing and it creates lift. Now there are ways to counter that. One way is to make the gap under the nose of the car tighter to the ground and wider at the rear. It creates a vacuum under the car. That's a ground effect. Uh, and there are other things you can do, adding a spoiler at the rear and a splitter at the front. But I'm going to go to a whiteboard and explain that more fully. All right, so what we're looking at here, we've got, uh, we've got the ground, and you've got the, the shape of the car. So uh, excuse my poor, uh, poor art here. But uh, so there's your Model 3. And uh, so basic shape of the car. So you've got air. You've got air in this direction heading toward the car, or the car is actually headed toward the toward the wind, and uh, but the direction of the air is is heading as so. Now, as the air goes around the car, you've got air that is going underneath the car, and this little section right here is called the splitter that splits the air to, from going under to going slightly over. So that's the splitter got air going underneath the car. Now the air under the car is going to be flowing in this direction, obviously, but it, it's also compressed and to a certain extent it will be tumbling. But it's blowing underneath the car and then that air escapes out from under. This is actually more of a uh, more of an upswept shape here than I originally drew. So the air is going to sweep out from underneath the car and um, the air here is going to hit the nose of the car and travel over. So you've got this rush of air going over the top of the car and then exiting off the tail. So as the air is going underneath the car, it's slightly compressed, which means you're going to have increased pressure under the car. Uh, unless this, if this space were higher than the nose, then you can actually create a vacuum under the car that'll suck the rear of the car down. Ideally, there'd be no pressure or vacuum under the car from an efficiency standpoint. But you've got air flowing under the car, and it's going relatively straight. But the air going over the top of the car is traveling further. That means the air going over the top of the car has to accelerate faster than the air going underneath the car. And that creates lift. It's the same thing that creates lift in an airplane wing. In an airplane wing, you've got on a typical not asymmetrical or non-symmetrical wing. It's flat on the bottom and then it's airfoil shaped on top. So you've got air hitting the nose of the wing and most of, or much of the air goes straight across underneath and some of the air has to curve over the top like so and then that air reconverges at the rear and that air going further over the top uh, of the wing than, than it is going across the bottom means that the air has to go further and therefore the air speed over the top of the wing is faster than the bottom and you, you generate lift. So that's what tends to occur in a car. So minimizing drag means minimizing lift and or downforce and you, you, want, you want the air to, to go around the car as smoothly as possible and reconverge at the rear in the smallest area possible because the smaller the area at the rear of the car the smaller a turbulent wake you'll have behind it and actually more drag occurs at the rear of a moving object than it does typically at the nose or around the, the surface of it that depends on certain things but typically you have more drag at the rear than you do around the rest of the vehicle so I don't want to get too involved in it I'm not a scientist I'm not an aerodynamicist but this is just some, some general uh, information for you. And um, so this is why when I mention 
uh, minimizing lift, you do actually get lift over the top of a car. You don't automatically get downforce. If you want downforce, you can put a spoiler on the rear and that makes the air do this. And that gives you, that gives you downforce, but it also increases this wake behind the car and creates more turbulence coming off that, that lip because it's really swooping up. So you've got this, this larger wake behind the car and much more turbulence. So increasing downforce on, say, on a race car also increases drag. And um, if you want to do more reading on this, you can look up drag reduction systems. Uh, Ferraris, many high-end cars have drag reduction systems, DRS. It's a button on the steering wheel, and that drops the, the wing down flat. So on the straightaways, you have a smaller uh, wake behind the car, but then you release the drag reduction, and the wing pops up, and you get higher downforce in the corners which you typically want air drag as you slow down for a corner and more downforce and less drag on the straightaways. So active aerodynamics and or uh, manually adjustable on the fly aerodynamics really is where it's at for extreme high performance. But for just the, the sake of simplicity, this will give you guys a, a little bit of an idea of what you have going on. So again, uh, not an expert, but uh, some general principles that I felt you guys would, uh, would enjoy uh, checking out. So anyway, Go ahead and give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you hadn't done so already. And uh, let me know what other information you'd like, what other videos you'd like me to shoot, because I'm more than happy to, um, to do videos that you guys are interested in and to give you the best content I can. Anyway, have a great day.